with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. That's government's legitimate role, right there. <laughs> government's role is to protect and preserve our sacred rights. And the list of things we have empowered them to do is in the Constitution. It's not a mystery. And as Bob Levy pointed out, they are ignoring this. They have a list. It's in Article 1, Section 8. There are about 29 things on that list by my count. You might count them a little differently. But that's what they are empowered to do. And every time they step out of that, they violate that sacred trust and as far as I'm concerned, they belong in jail. <laughs> the Bill of Rights was written specifically to enforce those limitations. And that motivation is captured in the preamble, which I have the honor to read this evening. Neither party in our central government is aware of these bedrock principles. And that's why, in my view, the nation is in such dire straits. The orientation our freshman legislators are getting right now does not include a study of the Constitution. Can you believe that? And the people who organize and plan and implement the uh, preparation for the inbound legislators are an enemy we have not looked at. They're teaching these people how to be the government, and they're not including the Constitution, and we don't see the people who are doing that. They're behind the scenes. They operate quietly, and they're t training the temporary help, the people we elected. And that's a problem that's going to have to be dealt with. When the readers are finished with the Bill of Rights, when the Tenth Amendment is done, we're asking you to uh, maintain a moment of silent reflection and think about the words that just rang out, and then we'll have a discussion of the bill's health and where we're headed and what we can do. That said, Congress of the United States begun and held at the city of New York on Wednesday, the 4th of March, 1789. The conventions of a number of the states, having at the time of their adopting the Constitution, express the desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers and that further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added. And as extending the ground of public confidence in the government will best ensure the beneficent ends of that institute, of its institution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled two-thirds of both houses concurring that the following articles be proposed to the legislatures of the several states as amendments to the Constitution of the United States, all or any of which articles, when ratified by three-fourths of said legislatures, to be valid to all intents and purposes as part of the said Constitution. Articles in addition to an amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America proposed by Congress and ratified by the legislatures of the several states pursuant to the fifth article of the original Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of people peaceably to assemble, to petition the government for redress of grievances. Well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed.
No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, of a manner to be described by law. Amendment number four, right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Amendment number five. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise an infamous crime unless on presentment or indictment of the grand jury, except in cases arising in land or naval forces or in the militia, where in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject to the same offence to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself nor be deprived of life, liberty, property, without due process of law. Nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Amendment number six. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Anybody give it a higher grade? 